This video is a tutorial for Tarski's World, one of the programs that we'll be using a lot in this class. So let's turn to see uh, what it does for us and how to navigate it. All right, so once you've downloaded the Language Proof and Logic software, you should see this folder on your desktop. So at least that's where it appears for me. You double click it and it provides us a list of programs uh, that we'll be using for this class, as well as a software manual um, if you ever need that, uh, and even electronic version of the textbook. All right, so the program that we're interested in taking a look at right now is Tarski's World, and that would be this program here. So go ahead and double click that. And we have Tarski's World. Now the left side of Tarski's World is where our world actually is. It consists of this um, check this uh, checkerboard or chessboard here, this virtual one. We can rotate it different ways. We can take a top-down look at it instead of this three-dimensional angled uh, look at it. Uh, to the right side, we have sentences that we can write about the world. So first, let's take a, a more in-depth look at the world, the left side. So what we can do in Tarski's world is we can create blocks. We can make several of them, as you can see. We can move these blocks to different places in the world. And not only that, but we can make our blocks have different shapes. So we got three shapes that are available to us. We have cubes, we have tetrahedra, and we have dodecahedra. Not only that, but we can make our shapes have different sizes. So our shapes can be small. So right now this dodecahedron is small. We can make our shapes medium. Right now this tetrahedron is medium. And we can make our shapes large. Right now this cube is large. And we can change them whenever we want as long as we have it selected. So the other thing that we can do with these shapes uh, is we can name them. So maybe I want to name this tetrahedron A. And so now when I talk about A over in the sentences, I'm talking about that tetrahedron. Likewise, we could name, uh, no, notice I can no longer use A to name any other object. Um, one name can only refer to one object. However, it turns out that one object can have more than one name. So I can name this tetrahedron A and B. Same thing like people, you know, you'll have your first name, but maybe you have a nickname too. Well, both of those names, your, your uh, born name, the name that's on your birth certificate, uh, picks you out, and so does your nickname. So same sort of idea here. Uh, so the cube we could name C. Uh, and we can name things all the way up to F if we feel like it. All right, so now I can talk about these objects. Um, and we can talk about all sorts of things uh, about these objects, given the predications that are available to us. Before, uh, before turning over to the sentences and taking a look at what that uh, looks like, let's see how we can open up various exercise uh, files. So if we come to File, go to Open, what we have to do then is navigate back to Language Proof and Logic folder, which is a bit of a pain. I wish it just opened it up immediately, but it doesn't. You have to navigate to it. And then to open up Exercise Files, uh, we have to click this folder that says TW Exercise Files. And you'll see that there are files 
that will have the label sentences or files that have the label world. So let's just pick one of the worlds and see what happens. And we see that it opens up a world with shapes already in certain positions and with certain names. And we can see that I can actually flip back in between these worlds by clicking, toggling um, between these two names. Okay. Whenever you need to save a file because it needs to be submitted, I recommend to always use save sentence as because if you some of these files you use multiple times and if you save them uh, as opposed to save as then in order to get the original file again you'll have to um, you'll have to remove all the files off your computer and reinstall it so that's a big pain so just always use save world as or save sentence as when saving the exercise files all right, let's see what it is that we can say about these worlds, or at least get a sense about what we can say about them. What you'll notice over here, there are several buttons that are predicates and relations that we can assert about the world. So for instance, we can hit the tetra, the tet button, that's the predicate that stands for is a tetrahedron. Let me uh, increase the size of this so it's easier to see. <clears throat> and by pressing that button and then let's say A, that says A is a tetrahedron. And by coming up over here and hitting this TF button, I can see that it's true. And indeed, we look at the world uh, in which we're talking about and we see that A is, in fact, a tetrahedron. Now, we don't have to actually hit the buttons to, to assert um, predicates of the objects in question. We can type them out. So, for instance, I can say that A is a cube. And now I'm going to get an F for that because it is, in fact, false. A is not a cube. A is a tetrahedron. Um, also, uh, I can say things that are grammatically incorrect. So, for instance, if I leave off that parenthesis, um, now as far as FOL is concerned, we have gibberish. That doesn't really say anything. And if I hit the TF, it'll give me this star letting me know that I have uh, a, gr a grammatically incorrect sentence. Um, also, another thing that we can do is we could try to talk about something that doesn't exist in our world. So none of our objects are named F over here. So if I say F is a cube, and then I try to say whether that's true or false, I'll get this plus sign. There's something fishy going on since F doesn't exist in the world. So it gives us this plus mark to let us know that that's happening. All right, here are some other features of Tarsi's world. If we, well, one, we can go to the commands and we can add sen sentences, more sentence lines by either add sentence after or uh, sentence before. As you can see, you can use control A, control B, control D to do these uh, types of functions as well. I recommend learning how to do that. I find it to be faster. So control A, control B, and we'll add uh, various sentences lines. If I need to delete something, control D will do that so on and so forth all right up here you'll see that we can actually instead of typing the names in we can um, use the buttons for the names if that's what you prefer to do so i can say that d is a tetrahedron for instance you can see that that comes out to be true since we look at d over here we see that it is in fact a tetrahedron You'll also see that we have various logical connectives. Well, this means contradiction, actually, but these are uh, various logical connectives. We have here our quantifiers, and down here we have some variables. We can also uh, introduce, instead of typing out the parentheses, we can use these to add parentheses. 
and we have a special a special type of predicate, um, one that ends up being infix notation. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so this is the identity sign. It means numerically identity or, or numerically identical or one and the same. This means it's not numerically identical. That means they're distinct or different objects. All right. So for instance, I can say D is a tetrahedron and let's say B is, is a cube. And notice that's going to turn out to be true because D is a tetrahedron and B really is a cube. Or I could say B is a cube. And Actually, let's do this. And C is a tetrahedron. And that'll come out false because even though B is a cube, tetrahedron, uh, C is not a tetrahedron. C is a dodecahedron. All right, so these this allows me to introduce the various sorts of logical connectives that are going to be available to us and also... Um, the identity sign and uh, not identity, as well as the various variables in contradiction. Uh, but it also turns out that there are shortcuts to these symbols as well. So you'll notice that I'm no longer going up to those buttons to put in some of them. Um, I can put in the conjunction sign this way. And once again, I recommend learning which buttons do this um, just because it makes it qu which buttons allow you to do these shortcuts because it's faster. I just find it to be faster anyway. Uh, so where can you learn that? If we come back. To our language proof and logic folder. When we come to our software manual on page 22, I believe. There it is, page 22. We have our shortcuts on the keyboard for typing the symbols. So if you want to type the handlebar for negation, you've got to hit the tilde. So shift tilde, ampersand for the conjunction, money sign for the arrow, so on and so forth. Uh, before moving on, just like we I could find exercises in the exercise folder or uh, various pre-made worlds. We can also find pre-made sentences, and this will be important for our uh, various sorts of exercises, homework that you'll have to do. Uh, you go to open. You have to navigate again to the TW exercise files, which now we are located on. And we can just pick any sentences. We can say uh, these sentences here. And now we have a bunch of sentences that are already uh, made for us. So <clears throat> since we don't have any object with the name F, um, we're going to get the plus sign there. We can see that that's false uh, for reasons we'll, we'll talk about what the arrow means and, and so on and so forth. I just want you to see how it is that we can get those sentences and that we can toggle back and forth between these. Uh, we can also bring up uh, certain other buttons. Um, it 
it's possible that you'll need to talk about pets. If you need the pets buttons, you can toggle over from the block language to the pets language. Um, and for this class, we're probably not going to deal with set theory or uh, any of the arithmetic symbols. So we'll probably only be using block language and pets language. So that was a short preview of Tarski's world. What I would suggest you do is go ahead and get into Tarski's world yourself. Um, create a world by dropping down blocks into it, uh, arranging them in various sorts of ways, naming them, so on and so forth. And then also writing sentences about them and seeing if those sentences are true or false or grammatically correct, so on and so forth. With that, that ends our tutorial for Tarski's world. Thanks for watching.